uh, welcome you all to watch the video of Recall Neural Network. Prediction about this uh, Recall Neural Network example. So do you know how uh, Google autocomplete the word that we are going to type? See this, uh, Google is having a database that have a collection of large volumes of uh, most frequently occurring consecutive words. So from these words, it can automatically type what is the word that we have to type next. With the help of that Recall Neural Network, so with the past data and the, with the present input, it automatically predict the next value. So it analyzes data by data by finding the sequence of words occurring frequently. And it builds a model to predict the next word in the sentence. Before we start RNN, we have a, some basic introduction about the neural network. So it's having multiple layers. So it, uh, it connected to each other and it works like a structure of a human brain. So it processes with the huge volumes of data and uses complex training algorithms to train the neural network of two different breeds of dog. So it identify which one is the German Shepherd and which one is the Labrador. So the most popular networks that we are using are the feed forward network, convolutional network, deep neural network, deep belief network, and a recurrent neural network. It's mainly used for recognizing the speech concept in feed forward network. So these are the main drawbacks. Here, the decisions are made only based on the current input that we are providing, and there's no memory about the past. So there will be no future scope about using this feed forward network. So this is a simple presentation of this feed forward network. So it's having input layer, hidden layer and output layer. For input layer that X is the input and that Y cap that represents the predicted output. So in this network, it depends only on the current input value. So the main issues in the feed forward network are it can't able to handle the sequential data and it consider only the present input and it can't able to memorize the previous input. So the solution is given now. So in this type of recall neural network, so we are having both the present and past values. So based on this present and past values, we can predict the output. So it can able to handle the sequential data and also it considers the present input and previously received input. And it can able to memorize the inputs due to the internal memory present in it. So this is the architecture of the RNN. So it works on the principle of saving the output of a layer and feeding it back to the input in order to predict the output of the layer. This is how the RNN look. So these are the past values that X of T if it is present means these are the past and these are the future values. So there are various types of the RNN. So it is a one to one mainly it is used as the vanilla neural network for regular machine learning problems and one to many. So there's a one input and multiple outputs mainly used for image captioning many to one we are providing a multiple inputs and we are getting a single output For example for this many to oneness sentimental analysis given a sentence means it can be classified as expressing either is a positive or negative sentiment then many to many multiple inputs and multiple outputs so it has taken in a sequence of inputs and generate a sequence of outputs For example is machine translation so it translate from one language to another language the main issue with this rnn is vanishing gradient problem so what do you mean by vanishing gradient problem? While training this type of network, we are having a slope. It is too small or if it is too large, that makes the training process very difficult. So when the slope is very small means that we call it as vanishing gradient problem. So we have to train it back. So at that time we can achieve this vanishing gradient problem. And the other one is exploring gradient problem. So when the slope is tend to grow exponentially, so instead of uh, decaying, when it slope tends to grow exponentially means that problem that we call it as exploring gradient problem. So the issues in gradient problem is it requires a long time to train and also the performance becomes very poor. Accuracy also gets affected. The solution to this gradient problem is long short term memory. So to remove the exploring gradient problem, first we have to identify initialization. Then we have to truncate at the back propagation concept. Then we have to gradient the clipping. In case of vanishing gradient, first we have to initialize the weight. So after initializing the weight, we have to choose which activation function has to perform well. We apply this long short term memory networks, long term dependency. Suppose we try to predict the last word in the text. The clouds are in the, we don't need any further context. It is pretty clearly the last word is going to be sky. So this is about the long term dependency. The last word in the text. So I have been staying in the Spain for last 10 years. So I can speak fluent Spanish. So here we need the context of the Spain to predict the last word. So when this Spain will not be provided mean we can't able to predict this well. So it is impossible that the gap between this relevant information and the point where it is needed 
to become very large. LSTM helps to solve this issue. The network of LSTM, so it is one kind of RNN that is capable of learning long term dependencies. So as its basic ability to remember information for long periods of time. Inside the LSTM, you are having three process. Number one is to forget the irrelevant information in the previous state. So we have to remember only what are the things that are important to remember. Then we have to update the cell state values in a selective manner. Then we have to predict certain parts of the output. Now we can see how LSTM works. The number one step is to decide how much amount of past we should remember. So this is an incoming value of past and this is present. We have to define how much amount of past we have to remember. It looks at the previous state and the current input and it computes the function. So that function is defined by that sigma of waf dot ht minus 1 comma xt. So this is the present one and this is the past plus biasing function. In step 2 it decides how much should this unit add to the current state. So next they are using the tan h function. So in the second layer there are two parts. One is sigmoid function and the other one is tan h. In the sigmoid function it decides which value to let through. It can be decided by 0 or 1. So the tan h that gives weightage to the values which are passed deciding the level of importance that represents the input gate sigma w i into h t minus 1 comma x t plus bias and the c t that represents the tan h function that has been defined using w c h t f minus 1 comma x t plus bias function. So the final step is it decides what part of the current cell state make it to the output. So the third step we run a sigmoid layer which decides what part of the cell state make it to the output. Then we put a cell state through tan h to push the values to be between minus 1 and 1. Multiply it by the output of sigmoid gate. So this that OT that represents the output gate that allows the past information to impact the output. Now let's predict the price of stock using this LSTM network. So we are having the stock price data between 2012 to 16. Now we have to predict for 2017. First we have to import all the necessary libraries NumPy, Matplot and Pandas. So after importing the necessary libraries, we have to train the data sets with the input data that we are having. Then we have to scaling the futures of that input data with a particular range. After future scaling, we have to create a data structure with 60 time steps and one output. After that, we have to reshape that value. Then after reshaping the value, we have imported what are the libraries, Keras libraries that we are going to implement. So we are going to use that sequential dense LSTM and dropout. We have to initialize the sequential neural network which is RNN. Then we are adding four layers. The first LSTM layer, second one, third and fourth layer. And additionally, you have to add some dropout regularization, adding the output layer, then compile the program. So after compiling, when the number of epochs that goes on increasing, the loss that becomes less. So now we have to load the stock price of the test data that we are having. So now we predicted the stock price of 2017 within a particular range. Now you have to plot the graph and this is the red color that indicates the real Google stock price and the blue that indicates the our predicted stock price. Actually there are another various applications for this RNN. So here you can see this is an image captioning. So your dog is catching a ball in the mild air. So it helps to caption an image by analyzing the activities present in it. time series prediction. So based on the previous month it predicted what will be the next stock value. Translation, translation from various languages from English to Chinese, Italian, French, German and Spanish languages. We can able to translate. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you understand the concepts of RNN. Meet you in the next video. Till then, it's goodbye from Vijay.